Dear brothers and sisters, I'll keep it short, but I want you to remember the five things that I'm going to share with you inshallah ta'ala as we look out for Laylatul Qadr now. Every single one of those nights has the potential to be the most consequential night of your life. And so for 10 nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be looking out to His creation and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what he sees from us is pleasing to him. Allahumma ameen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man qama laylatul qadr imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi. Whoever stands up, whoever observes laylatul qadr with faith and seeking the reward, Allah will forgive them for all of their previous sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. So five things, dear brothers and sisters, I want you to carry with you inshallah ta'ala and to set your mind to from now as we get into these last 10 nights. Number one, as we go into the last 10 nights and as we hope that we catch Laylatul Qadr, remembering that the night starts at Maghrib. Remembering that the night does not start at Isha, but the night starts at Maghrib. And some of the Salaf, they mentioned that this is such an important point for us as we go into these precious nights, because how many people at the time of their breaking of the fast will lose out their Laylatul Qadr before they pray a single rak'ah of Taraweeh, before they even make it to Salat al-Isha. Why? Because over iftar, you might backbite, you might gossip, you might say something you should not be saying, you might do something that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn Qudama rahimahullah ta'ala said, and most of the people lose it in its early part of the night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Most of the people lose it in the early part of its night. It could be one comment that's made at the dinner table, one comment on your way, one joke that is told that should not be told in those nights, and of course should not be told at any part of the night. But it starts at Salatul Maghrib, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا That they forsake their beds, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward, fighting with their sides. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, this actually refers to the companions praying between Maghrib and Isha. And so remember to include everything from the Adhan of Maghrib all the way to the Adhan of Fajr as part of your Laylatul Qadr. The second thing, dear brothers and sisters, to make sure that we catch Isha and Fajr all 10 of those nights and days within Jama'ah. And if that jama'ah cannot be in a masjid for those that are not able to, then that jama'ah is formed in some other way, but to pray it in congregation. And we know that because the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever prays Salatul Isha in congregation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write down for them the first half of the night in prayer. And whoever prays Salatul Fajr in congregation, in jama'ah, Allah will write down for them the second half of the night in prayer. And so to put that in context, just very logically, to pray three hours in the night, but to miss Fajr, for example, or to miss your Isha would not be more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray them in jama'ah. Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, man shahid al-isha min laylatil qadr faqad akhadha bihaddihi minha. How merciful is Allah. He said, whoever prays Salatul Isha in congregation has taken their portion from Laylatul Qadr. So keeping that, and if it is your regular habit and you're unable to do so, then Allah will have written it down for you anyway. But have the intention inshallah ta'ala for every night and day that you can to catch Isha and to catch Fajr in Jama'ah. And if you're unable to at that time, or if you sleep through one of them and it overcomes you and you pray at home, do not grieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down in accordance with the intention. So that's the second thing, not to miss Isha or Fajr in Jama'ah in those nights. The third thing, what the Prophet said authentically, that whoever prays Qiyam with the Imam until he finishes, Allah will write down for him the entire night in prayer. Now the ulama differ as to what the quantity of that is. Does that mean, for example, that if the Imam comes at 3 o'clock a.m. or at 2 o'clock a.m. and prays for an hour, let's say from 3 to 3.45, and you pray with that single jama'ah, that single group of people, that single imam for that entire time. That, that counts as the entire night in prayer. Does that mean if you pray the first eight or if you pray a, you know, a group of rak'at with one imam that that counts? And bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we take the opinion, inshallah ta'ala, that yes, 
to pray with an Imam when there is an established prayer from the beginning of their Qiyam until the end of their Qiyam counts as the entire night of prayer. So try to be you know, very careful to catch it. And if you can catch both of the prayers, then do so. But to at least pray one block of the night, bidnillahi ta'ala, behind an Imam throughout their entire portion of what they are to read that night. And if you can catch Witr with them, then do so bidnillahi ta'ala. That is the third thing. Now I'll get to the ones that get a little bit more interesting and that require a little bit more thought bidnillahi ta'ala. We started off this month by talking about what the best athqar, what the best forms of remembrance in Ramadan are. What is the best dua in Laylatul Qadr? We all know the answer to that. But I want to I want to build on that just a little bit, inshallah ta'ala. This number four means keeping yourself busy in dua and particularly the short duas. I'm going to mention the reason why. Most people in here, if not everyone, already memorizes Allahumma inna ka afuwun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner, you love to pardon, so pardon me. Most of us memorize that dua, we have been taught it at a very young age. Alhamdulillah, when Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu what dua should I make? The Prophet sallallahu did not give her a page dua that we would all be fumbling to try to find it and try to repeat it and get through the Arabic of it. No, anyone can memorize this dua and anyone can learn its meaning very quickly. That in and of itself is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the ulama say, build on that concept of the short comprehensive du'as as you move around on Laylatul Qadr, even, subhanAllah, even they said if you're on your way to relieve yourself and come back, keep the short du'as on your tongue. Why? Because the Messenger SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَحَبُّ الدُّعَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَجْمَعُهَا The most beloved of du'as to Allah, the most beloved of supplications to Allah are the ones that are the most comprehensive. What do you say in tawaf between Al-Rukn al-Yamani and Al-Hajr al-Aswad, the last round of tawaf. You just keep repeating what? Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. As you're moving around, whatever you're doing, as you're trying to think of what you want to do next, as you're in, immersed in your du'as, sandwiched in between your personal du'as, Use the short comprehensive du'as you memorize from the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and let them engage you throughout the entire night. The short athkar, the short forms of remembrance, and the short comprehensive du'as from the Messenger Wasallam. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, number five. This is the most comprehensive way to understand Laylatul Qadr and it's very important. The narration about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرُ شَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ وَأَحْيَا لَيْلَهُ وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when the last 10 nights would come in, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tighten up his waist belt and he would give life to the night. He would enliven the night. The whole night was alive. What a beautiful expression. The night of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive. And he would wake up his family. He would make sure that his family also was participating in it. Rasulullah when he said, do not turn your homes into graveyards. Assign a share of your salah to your homes. Don't turn them into graves. Why? Because dhikr gives life to the heart and it gives life to any space that we are in. And Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a very important reflection on this hadith. He says that when you look at the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, some of them preferred to spend the night in praying. Some of them preferred to spend the night in Qur'at al-Qur'an, in the recitation of the Qur'an. Some of them preferred to spend the night in dua. Some of them preferred to spend the night distributing their sadaqat. Each one of them had a regimen and they weren't all the same. Because the Prophet ﷺ's description in this regard was simply give life to the night. All of the deeds that would give life to the night. And so every single Muslim is included in this category that you have something to give life to every portion of the night. And within that, you diversify your good deeds. And an easy way to remember this, dear brothers and sisters, is that all of the good deeds that are preferred in Ramadan are even more preferred in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And, and make sure there's a portion of each one of them in the last 10 nights. This is what Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala said. 
He said that qala ashabuna, he said that our our scholars said waljudu mustahabbu mustahabbu fi shahri Ramadan wa fil ashr al-awakhir afdal iqtida'an bi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa bi salaf wa li annahu shahran sharif fal hasanatu fihi afdal min ghayrihi. He said radiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa rahimahullah that our scholars said that to be generous in Ramadan is highly recommended, as we know from the Prophet ﷺ, al-jud, the most uh, broad definition of generosity. And he said, specifically during the last 10 nights, because the best time to emulate the Prophet ﷺ is in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. So every description you have of the Prophet ﷺ, iqtida, to follow the Prophet ﷺ in those last 10 nights is the best way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at any time. And the month is honored as a whole. And these last 10 nights are the most honored 10 nights of the month. And subhanAllah, we find a connection between particularly in that regard, dua and charity, dua and sadaqa to al-qadr, to decree. Why? Because the Prophet said that there are two things that affect your divine decree. He mentioned dua, that nothing uh, changes the divine decree except for supplication, except for dua. And he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that nothing extends the life of a person except for a sadaqa, except for charity. That would actually form an extension, change the decree and extend a person's life. So you can find what then on Laylatul Qadr, what then on the night of decree, right? To bring these types of deeds into our lives as well. So as you are there inshallah ta'ala, as you are thinking about how do I fill these hours, diversify. Keep going between these things and know that you are following the Salaf in some way. One of the companions has a night that resembles the one that you do, or you hope that your night resembles one of the Sahaba in the portions that you are assigning because they were all different in that regard, but all of them were exerting themselves all 10 nights of Ramadan, giving life to the night in obedience to the Prophet ﷺ and in seeking the pleasure of Allah. Lastly, the most simple form of advice. What is the point of i'tikaf if you're still connected to everybody and everything in i'tikaf? A person could be sitting in the masjid all night long, would have their phone and still be checking groups and still be going on different apps and still talking to people. And they are in less i'tikaf than a person who's sitting in their bedroom, but has put their phone to the side. I'm not talking about the technical specs of it. I'm talking about the meaningful part of it. The whole point is seclusion. So even if you can't do i'tikaf, and we're, you know, obviously we have restrictions this year uh, in regards to how we would do i'tikaf. Even if you can't physically do i'tikaf, do not leave room for yourself to get lost in something during the last 10 nights. So if I could take an oath in Jum'ah, I would from each and every single one of you. No social media, no WhatsApp, no text messages, no nothing, except of course, if you're texting someone from your family or something just to get something done. None of that during the last 10 nights. When the time of Maghrib comes in, put it aside. I'm not going to check anything. I'm not going to go to anything because Allah knows, Allah knows that that one minute turns quickly into 30 minutes and then that one conversation quickly turns into 10 sayi'ah, 10 sins. Be careful. Cut it all off in the last 10 nights. Rasulullah went in complete i'tikaf in the last 10 nights. Let's try to cut it all off inshallah and only maintain what is necessary so that we are able to communicate with our family ta'ala or communicate in ways that need to be communicated inshallah ta'ala. But cut it all off and don't leave even an inch of it to corrupt any one of those precious 10 nights. Remember SubhanAllah, Laylatul Qadr, the night of Laylatul Qadr was lost because the Prophet ﷺ came out and he saw two companions that were arguing. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala رفعها. Allah Azza wa Jal lifted it from the Prophet ﷺ and the companions because of two people that were arguing. Do not be that person. SubhanAllah, where the angels are on their way to you and then you quickly do something and they leave you. Don't do that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to isolate our hearts, seclude our hearts, our thoughts, our bodies, our tongues, everything from that which is displeasing to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to engage in that which is pleasing to Allah. SubhanAllah, dear brothers and sisters, just like with Hajj, la rafatha wa la husuqa wa la jidala fil Hajj, it's don't do anything to mess it up. 
Don't do anything to mess up Arafah. The same thing is true. Don't do anything to mess up your Laylatul Qadr. May Allah protect us from doing so and may Allah allow us to exert ourselves and connect with Him in a way that gives us a lifetime of good deeds and gives us a lifetime of consciousness and taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we rise to the level of ihsan, rise to the level of excellence and be amongst His most pleasing servants. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru wa li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-Muslimin. Astaghfiru innahu wa rafu rahim.